Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildenhall and Volmo. And um, apologies because you haven't seen my face for a little while and to some people it might be a bit of, of hooray! Um, but just to sort of give you a bit of an update as to what's been going on. Um, basically, um, I've been very poorly these last few weeks and um, so I, I'm, as you can probably tell I'm still a little bit on, under the weather. I'm not 100% but I'm getting there, I'm over the worst of it which is why I'm doing this video um, and which is one of the reasons why the last two videos that I've put up, you haven't really seen me, I've just, just been putting up some sort of um, running session type videos um, which seems to have gone down well and I'd like to thank you for all your comments that you've provided during that and in this video um, we're going to be looking a little bit in depth more as to some of the stuff you did see on those running session videos because some people had noticed that there was things on the layout that wasn't actually there beforehand. So today is just going to kind of have a little bit more of an explanation as to what I've been doing and taking a bit of a closer look as to what's been going on. Um, and also there's, an, there's a few new bits that's turned up. Um, I'm also waiting on a few bits to turn up. So um, without further ado, we're just going to spin you around. And first of all, we're not going to the layout. We're actually going to my kitchen and all will be explained. So before we head over to the layout, um, I thought I'd just show you what's directly in front of you, which is this stand. Um, this arrived yesterday. So I spent yesterday building it. And this is it. This is Tabletop Scenics. And this is the Vallejo paint rack for up to 100 Vallejo paints. Um, now, one of the reasons is, is because I've got this kind of arrangement going on where I used to keep my paints in here. And as you can see, there still are some paints here and I'll put some pieces in here. Um, and so there, there's some paints here, there's some accent wax here, and this is just a torch. Um, and then there's some glues here that I have going on here, which I've now got a little bit of space for. Now, just as a little something for John Warner, actually, because John Warner's put on his previous video that he made his own little set square. But you can actually buy them. This is a metal one. So if you do want one, this cost me very cheap on eBay. You can get little diddy ones. So that's just a little something for John Warner. Just to show him that I've got that. Purely by chance, actually, it's in here. So anyway, um, so all my Vallejo paints that you see on the rack there were all in here and they're all lying down on their side like this and um, I mean they are currently on their side there but the point being is that they weren't very organised in here, they were just sort of thrown in and then you having to sort of like sort of lift one on top of the other to get to one at the bottom. So I just wanted to make it a little bit more organised. Now the plan is that these paints that I've got going on here um, I will eventually get rid of them and convert them into um, Vallejo paints. Um, this is Noel Noel from Citadel, so you don't get that in um, Vallejo. Oh, at least I don't think so. So that will stay as it is, but some of these are but actual paints. And these are Ravel paints here, and there's some paints there. So eventually, all of this is going to be converted into Vallejo paints. And then will be stored on this rack. Um, so the rack itself, um, I wanted because like I said, I'm a massive fan of Vallejo paints. Um, these are wonderful paints to use. I love using them. Um, they're great consistency. They go a long way. Um, they, they don't get clogged up, um, which is what I find with the, with the Hornby ones, which is why I don't like it. Um, the lids on the Hornby ones, this is a Hornby acrylic. I find that the lids on these get really clogged up and then you can't seal them properly and then the paint dries out inside and then you end up throwing paint away because it's all totally clogged up. <clears throat> so the plan is to basically convert all those into Vallejo paints and I'm steadily doing so. Um, and then on this rack, they're actually, if you look at it from the side, they're actually slightly angled downwards to keep the paint towards the front end. So it's not just sitting there, so there's a slight angle to it, slight tilt. Um, like I said, this is 
this 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 rack here takes up to um, 100 Vallejo paints, and like I said, that is the actual uh, front end to come of it. Um, it. It's easy to put together, but it is fiddly because it all kind of slots together. But when you put it, it kind of gets a bit rickety until you start gluing it together. So it is a bit. It's not like I said. It's not a difficult job. It's very easy, um, but it is a bit. It is a bit fiddly. Um, but it is well worth it because it just means that my paint rack is now going to be a bit more organised and I know where everything is. Um, now you can get different sizes, you can get 50, you can get 20 and 30 that it can take. So you can get different sizes and different shapes and different racks and different types of racks. So you can get stuff that just sits on the top there and has the um, Vallejo paints upright as opposed to on its side. Um, if you want that kind of style. Um, I got this off of eBay. Now the reason why I bought this particular one. Was because this one was £10 for this free postage. And I was interested in it. And I stuck it on my watch list on my eBay account. And as I was sifting through all the other types to see which ones I wanted. And to be honest I don't need one that takes 100. Because I doubt if I'll ever have 100 um paint to stick in here but as we all know with model railways they just tend to grow and then you end up finding that you've got a lot more paint than what you'd anticipated but in any case um, the reason why I went for this particular one was because it was £10 free postage and some of the other ones took less but were charging you more so you were paying like £15 to store 20 to store 20 or 30 paints so to me, I thought, well, okay, I'll just this is, this is definitely much better value. Um, I stuck it on my eBay watch list, and the seller got back to me and made me an offer. And he actually made me an offer of nine pounds free postage. So again, so I couldn't argue with that, and I went, okay, fine. Um, I got that, and that arrived yesterday, and I spent about an hour and hour and a half putting that together yesterday, um, just just sitting there just watching stuff on youtube and putting it together but like i said um what i would recommend is if you do get something like this that you do actually build it on a flat surface like this because like i said it is a bit rickety so you know it, it does pay to to build it on a flat hard surface so that's what i would say um a lot of the reasons why um i bought these vallejo paints is because um of these figures um i've I, these figures that i bought some time ago off of ebay um i had been put enough because I, I was a bit daunted by it but as you can see from my last video and um, i had to put some photographs off some of these figures they've actually turned out all right now i haven't finished them all i've still got some to do here um these figures at the top a mixture of Batman figures, Prize of figures, and also there's another company in there, which is like a, a white metal figure. You can feel him because he's really, he's really weighty. And then here are some pigeons and birds and things like that. So they need to be painted up. So um, I've been slowly getting through these figures. Um, so these are the mechanics which need to go into the bus garage, and there's also um, a few other people in there to be painted up. Um, the people up the top. I've literally just found them the other day and I thought, oh, that's good. I can put them on the layout. So I'm just going to show you this invoice quickly before we go to the layout. And this invoice doesn't give me any, any sort of my details in terms of my address. or, But it will tell you roughly how much I paid, which is £22.79. And this is what I got for my money. So I got five times mechanics. So those are the mechanics that need to be painted up, which are in here in the box, which I haven't done yet. Um, the delivery drivers are the two delivery drivers that I got for the DPT vans. Um, the, the girl that's pregnant, that's the one at, at the bus stop um, with the um, with the father holding the son. And then after the, the female street bus, because she's, she's here to be painted as well. Um, the guy on the mobile phone, he's on the layout. And the little dog, he's he's a, he's on the layout, but he needs um, he's rumbling around aimlessly at the moment. He needs actually an owner, so I need to find an owner for him. But that came up to about twenty two seventy nine, which I thought was pretty good value for money, to be honest. And again, 
they're 3D figures that I think that's what the company's called 3D figures and they are from eBay so basically the figures are from eBay um, and so is the rack from eBay and like I said it wasn't a particularly difficult search just search on eBay for um, well I actually did a 3D search for the Vallejo paint rack that's all I did and this is what came up but like I said you can this is specific for Vallejo paints but like I said you can get other paint racks available so if you've got um, if you use Humbrol or any of the other um, Ravels or anything like that you could probably get racks for them but I specifically wanted a Vallejo rack and I think for £9 I think that's really really great value for money like I said, it goes together really easily. Just have to be careful because it is still quite fragile. So you can break this off if you're not careful. So you still have to be um, careful taking it out of the sprue. So now over to the layout. And as you can see, um, we're now going to talk about this properly. Because this is probably the first time that you've seen it proper as in me discussing it. I did sort of allude to it through my running sessions videos where you could see um, that this was here and a few pe people picked up on it and went, oh, I didn't notice that was there. So one of the reasons, so basically in front of you is the ramp. This is a new piece that I've just put together and all made out of card. And basically it connects this end of the layout directly all the way down to the other end so that road down to the mini roundabout all the way around there and around the corner to the level crossing which is right down the end there so it connects the layout all the way down from one end to the, to the other so one of the reasons why i wanted to do this is because um, i wanted to show off some of my my additional vehicles that i've got and that i've been collecting um so and add all the rest of my buses and things like that that i've got knocking about on the layout um and that was it actually took longer than i expected because the original exit to the container terminal was where the ramp was so i was sort of half expecting just to build the ramp and slot it in but it turned out to be a, lot, a little bit more work than i anticipated however nonetheless i'm very pleased with the results um basically what it's meant is that um, the exit has now changed. So I've had to move all the lamp posts. Um, so this lamp post here still needs to be lit because I haven't put the LEDs through that yet. Um, but basically, I've had to rearrange the lighting along here on this back strip and move the um, lamp posts slightly over. Um, I've also moved this lamp post here slightly that way because it was a bigger gap, so I've just reduced it. So again, that's kind of um, been moved. So in the end, I've had to, ended up having to change and rewire, and then that obviously I've had to rewire the, the lamp post from underneath the board. So it's actually, it wasn't just a straightforward case of me building the ramp and put it in where the exit was before. However, um, I think it was well worth the effort um, in the end, and I think it just looks looks really good. and. The great thing about that is, is it didn't cost me a penny because I already had all the materials already to hand. Um, the fencing was already fencing that I'd saved from previously. Um, the card I'd already bought was additional spare card that I had left over, so that didn't cost me anything. Um, the big piece of mount board that I had, I was going to use to make the con extra containers on here, but I decided to go a different way, so that piece of card ended up being spare which then allowed me to build a ramp so that hasn't cost me anything either so that whole project has cost me literally nothing except for my time so the only thing it has cost me is some paints from Wilco's whilst I was working um, I just popped in during my lunch break to um, pick up um, some paints and just to colour in and to paint the road which is about three quid or something like that um, so one of the other jobs I've been doing is um, adding some of my new vehicles and I've got a new vehicle here to show you. Um, this one here that you've seen, you've seen it in the box and um, I finally got it out. And then the new Boris Master is at the back, that's brand new. Um, very nice vehicle indeed. And just another one to add to the layout. 
Um, so if I just show you it, absolutely gorgeous vehicle. And it's on the Route 88 to Camden Town. I, I bought it because I just love delivery, to be honest. I thought it looked really, really nice. Let me just show you it properly from this side. It looks really nice. Now, I know technically some of these bus routes and everything doesn't really match, but to be honest, I'm not really that fussed. Um, I just love my buses and um, I love driving them. Um, I very much enjoy driving them. Um, and, I, and I guess this kind of reflects where I'm at with my buses, that how much I love them. But it also reflects that I do kind of miss my London days of bus driving. Um, I do, do I do miss that, but I'm here. Um, one of the other big things that I did is um, I took some photographs on my last video. And, um, and one of the things that came across was the um, the bus garage where, I, where that window is. Um, I've basically cut out the window and used acetate. Again, this has come from John Warner. Um, John Warner, many years ago, when I was doing Beringen Districts, offered me a solution to a very similar problem that I had over at Behringer. And I've applied the same technique to the bus garage. So now that crescent shaped window um, is now made out of acetate and strips of fine um, label. Um, and basically just to give the impression of what it was supposed to be like when it was printed in card. So now what that does, now I've changed it to acetate is that at, at, at night, it allows you to see through the building and see the vehicles inside the building. So it's just a nice little, nice little touch there that I've been doing. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, and like I said, the other thing about doing this ramp is that I've had to sort of change the entrance and exit points and figure out the new route for the lorries to come out. And as you can see, there's new road markings, um, new concrete bollards. The, um, the refreshment area has been moved to over here, which seems a bit more appropriate. And the exit is now over there. So you can now see that it's it's all kind of changed um, down from that point of view. So finally to finish um, the video, um, we've got this Freightliner 66. I'm just going to send it trundling around. And it's got some HIA wagons on the back of it. Um, now the point of this is that recently, um, like I said, I think on my last video, I was doing a um, running session. Um, and the running session featured... Um, the various wagons that I have on the layout and there's going to be a second part to it um, because I haven't gone through all the wagons um, including this set here and the whole point of this um, these videos that I was doing is I thought oh you know I can let you guys know what sort of flip wagons I have on the layout and it turns out I've got a lot more wagons than I actually expected um, so I come across some wagons that I had and they were absolutely running really, really poorly. And I decided to get rid of them because they were, they were just such bad runners. When I bought them, they were bad runners to begin with. Um, these were Hornby HEA EWS wagons, which looked really, really pretty and looked really, really nice. But unfortunately, they just couldn't stay on the track. Now I tried putting them on again. I haven't run them in ages. I thought I'd try them again on the layout. And they were just the same. Um, there was no weight in the wagons, and they were just so light they just fell off. The, 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 they couldn't stay on the track. Um, and even when I fully laden them, the, the weight of them was so light still, it just wasn't enough to keep them on. I tried putting weights in them. I put, tried putting loads in them, and they just kept derailing. So I got fed up with it, and basically I got rid of them. So I'd had enough of them. And basically, I've got something else for the price that I did for exchanging them. So we're going to let this 66 go, right? 
And these Dapol HIAs, they're absolutely superb, they're lovely. Um, they don't give me any trouble whatsoever. And, I, I, you know, they just run so nicely. So here comes our 66. And here comes my new arrival that will be trundling past. And we'll stop it. We'll take a few running shots of it and then we'll stop it and talk about it. So here is my latest arrival to the layout, and this is my Batman Class 150. Um, I picked her up um, earlier on this week um, as I was starting to get better. I thought I'd go out, and um, like I said, whilst I was doing this video for the wagons to show you all the wagons that I had, I got so fed up with the other wagons really not running right that I decided to get rid of them all and basically that pretty much paid for this class 150 GWR green um, and I got this because I felt I've always wanted to get this but to be honest with you the price originally and I had said this before was really really expensive it's about gone up to like 271 pound for this two car unit but it's easier to bear if you're trading stuff in which is exactly what I did um, and especially if it's trading stuff in that isn't running properly or you're not happy with then it makes it easier to bear and I was happy to get this and I knew I'd, I was actually going to get something else but I knew I'd get a lot more benefit and a lot more use out of this particular Batman 150. And um, I, like you see, it's got a chip in it, which I put into it. Um, I do want to get sound for it. I have been looking on YouTube to see various sound files. Um, because I do have another Batman 150 in the first Great Western, which you've all seen, which has got sound. So, just... Here, is my other one, my other first Great Western one, it's also a 150-2. Um, the unfortunate thing between this one and the green one is that for some reason Batman have numbered both of these the same, they've both got the same um, running number which is a bit daft but hey ho. Um, and one of the other differences between the two, not only just delivery, um, but there is actually, there's like a toilet lock compartment on this one. You can see the little window there. And on this one, there isn't. There's, that's all sealed off. Um, also, if I just sort of take you in, hang on a second. There's also some people in this one. There's some passengers in this one, which you don't get with the blue one. But it, it's like I said before, I don't think it really justifies the price hike, to be honest. Um, like I said, I paid, I think it's, I think I paid at, at 189 for this one. And this one come up to 271. But like I said, um, 
it is easier to bear when you're trading stuff in. So, you know, I wasn't happy with what I had before. So, you know, you know, it's in some ways, it's just like I said, it makes it easier to bear because like I said, you're just getting rid of stuff that you're not going to use or that is obsolete. So I'm really pleased with them both. Um, so like I said, this one has just got a regular DCC decoder fitted. So this one hasn't got any sound, but I am looking to get some sound fitted into this one. This one does have sound in it. Um, but I'm not overly impressed with the sound on this one. Um, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's his best sound file. This has come from Coastal DCC, um, you know. So I'm looking at getting um, another chip for the other one, a different chip. So this one's from Kevin from Coastal DCC. I don't think, like I said, it is one of his best ones, um, but it, it like I said, it does the job. So you know, I'm still pleased with it. It still works okay and everything like that. Um, I'll just pretty much fire it up and you can listen to it. Now ideally I could do with putting a better speaker into that. I think that's got a standard speaker into that. So I could do getting a better speaker put into that. That will improve it. Um, the thing that I'm not so keen on on this one is the way it doesn't seem to change up gears um, properly as you're going up. Um, at least in my view. I don't know if it's a setting that I need to change or tweak. I haven't really played with it a huge amount. But I'll send it on its merry way. Um, if I just sort of do the door sequence. The other thing is you can't hear on the door sequence. You can't also hear the doors opening. You can hear them close. Which I like, but you can't really hear the the opening sequence, which is, is something else. Um, so, <laughs> sending it the wrong way. Let's go back the other way. Like I said, it sounds good, but I think I think I could do a little bit better to be truthful. And this is what I mean on here, I think sometimes it hangs a bit too long on this gear and it sounds like... That's what I'm not sure of. So that's it. So back to this one, and um, I think the sound was okay on the on the other one. I think it was really good. Um, however, it's like I said, I think it wasn't one of his best ones. So I'll be looking at getting a different one. 
and I have had a look and so far um, I like the sound of the Southwest Digital version. Um, I did have a look at the Paul Chetta version and the House version. Um, I need to check the, a few a few others first to see, just to make sure. But I know that the Southwest Digital version I can get off my local model shop. So that won't take very long to get that chip ordered up. So let's just send this one on its merry way. So this concludes the end of today's video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it um, and gives you a bit of insight as to what I've been up to and what I've done and some of the additional things that, that I've bought and maybe help one or two of you decide on certain things, whether it be with the paint racks or whether it be with sound files, or whether it be with the DMU or some of the other stuff I've done. Um, comments are also welcome. I'd like to thank everybody for watching the video, taking time to comment and all the subscribers that are sticking with me and any of those who have recently joined. And I hope that those of you who've recently joined enjoy the content that you see. So until the next time, it's goodbye from Mildenhall and Volma. Um, I'm, up, I'm off to see a friend of mine shortly um, to have a look at his layout. Um, Nigel from Cotton End, which I've put up a couple of videos um, before. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a video this time round for it, um, but it'd be nice just to get out of the flat and actually just have um, a bit of um, human contact as it were, because I've been on my own for so long now, um, just trying to get myself fit and well. And it's, like I said, until the next time, it's bye from the home farmer. Goodbye.